All right, welcome back. It is night 31. Uh, after the last day, I uh, went back. I did a little final construction. I fixed the... Uh, I broke down the uh, the big giant tower that I had planned for uh, the water distribution. And uh, decided I was going to uh, go with something smaller. So I just put a little couple blocks over there and had the water trickle out instead. Um, I don't know if I have time to get to it today on this video. Um, today I am working towards one specific goal. I am going spelunking. I, uh, I dug down through the uh, basement of my uh, little home here until I reached an open cavern. And uh, I decided I'm going to go hunting for, uh, well, for lava, honestly. I'm wanting to build a boat dock, and the best way to build a boat dock, now that dry docks are no longer functional, is to use um, soul sand, which is only available in the nether. Um, soul sand is kind of like um, tilled earth, when you till it to make, uh, make it ready for planting seeds to make wheat. And that its actual height is lower than a normal block by a little bit. So it also has a unique property of being that it touches it, it tries to walk on it, walks slower. So it's also called slow sand instead of soul sand. But uh, because it's lower and it doesn't have that initial height, you can run a boat into it and you won't like shatter your boat. So it makes the best setup for a dock. Um, so I'll be doing that so, so to uh, create a way so I can start exploring around in the water more effectively. So, but to get to the Nether and collect my soul sand, I will need obsidian. And as I know, I do not have um, diamond tools to go mine it out. Uh, my only option is to go and get the lava I need to make um, obsidian and forge it in molds and so that's what the today's goal is so i'm gonna go down and we're gonna see if we can find some uh, lava hopefully i better find some and uh, not get horribly raped because i'm more than capable of dealing with the mobs that i run into you know uh, you can see i cleaned up in here i uh did some, uh, fix the ceiling and fix the surrounding walls, but, uh, I'm more than capable of dealing with normal mobs, and here's my little descent into darkness here. Normal mobs outside are no big deal. I can take them on, as long as I'm not, like, swarmed, hey, iron, um, I'm generally okay, but, uh, so, but down here in the darkness, <laughs> where the mobs are at, where they just, like, spawn all over, Chances are I might get my ass handed to me, so hopefully not, because I do have quite a bit of material on me. I would hate to have to lose all my tools if I was able to, because when you die, everything you have on you drops. Whoa, there's a spider now, and it drops right where you fall, and you have five minutes to get back and claim it before those drops disappear. So it's not always, it's not such a big deal out in the world if you're close to your spawn point. But down here in the dark depths of a uh, of a dungeonous cavern, it's kind of a uh, not an easy thing to do, especially if you're off in some deep corner of it. So I'll be doing my best to stay alive and take out whatever comes along to run my day. Uh, this is, of course, the first time I've actually done any cavernous exploration down here. Got him. Awesome. Alright, now to get down. Uh, it's dark, isn't it? God, it's so creepy down here. There's, like, mob sounds everywhere, and it's just, it, it drives me kind of nuts. It's dangerous. Like, there's just darkness everywhere. It's like, I just want to leave. 
I don't want to come back. Fuck this. Uh, that's, oh, right. My sound is off. That's why I'm not hearing them. Alright, let's turn it on. Now I hear everything everywhere. There we go. So they don't sneak up on me quite as easy. There's still the creepers that'll be ready to jump out at me, but, uh, as long as you don't run into, like, there's one now, um, like, a, an actual dungeon, because, uh, dungeons in the game have mob spawner boxes, and they just, like, spawn massive amounts of mobs, and those are dangerous, especially if there's, like, a, you know, a couple open dungeons, like, in your cavern, because it'll just be full of mobs. Like, I've gone into ones in the past when I was, um, playing, and I would just run into literally hundreds of things, and it was just constant battle over and over and over and over, and a little hold up in the ceiling, great. So, there's some gold there, which I can't dig up because I don't have an iron tool. Uh, any ore other than iron, uh, redstone, gold... Uh, lapis, diamond ore, all requires you have an iron pickaxe or diamond pickaxe in order to get it. If you attempt to mine it with another pickaxe, all you'll do is destroy the block and not get the drop. So keep that in mind if you ever go uh, spelunking as I'm doing here. I'm uh, blocking up some areas so that I can not have stuff come by and like attack me from behind. Wait, wait, what? Oh, there's light in the distance. There's lava over there. That's the easiest way to find the lava is to uh, follow the light. It's the only other natural light source besides the sun. Let's block this off. There we go. Uh, it's so dark. Alright, let's see if we can get over there. Today's music is an artist or band called Vulturus. Um, it's a type of, uh, it says it's an ambient drum bass, so it seems interesting. Uh, ah, I can't reach you. <laughs> uh, so I figured it would uh, get kind of a, a creepy sound to it, but it's still kind of upbeat too, so I figured it would work well. Got you. Uh -huh. Oh, come on. Why is he over there? Here. Come closer. Uh -huh. Yes. Alright. Oh. Still over there. Oh, there's another one. I see you, Mr. Sneak. Ah, I fell down. <laughs> you can't run anywhere. There's my lava. You need a minimum of, let's see, three, six, eight. You need ten units of lava to, uh, hello, I'm being shot at. 10 units of lava to create a, um, the amount of obsidian you need to open a portal to the nether. So, I only brought five buckets with me, so, even if I have to find a lava, like, lake, an actual pool of lava, because you see, I can only get one from these. These are just, like, little flows, so you take away the source block, and then there are no more. Only a lava lake is populated with a, a vast amount of the, the supply. You notice it takes, um, ow, quite a while for the lava to disperse, unlike water. Ah, spider. Okay. Awesome. Now I need to find more lava. Let's see, uh, sorry, I'm getting interrupted here. Okay, back to work. Uh, 
Ah, I'm being attacked. Gah, get off of me. Oh, I'm wasting my armor at an exceeding rate. <laughs> so, I think I should just move on to another area. Let's see, it's such a... It'd be so much easier, like... If the caverns were... Oh, okay, that's just not cool. If the caverns were designed in a more... I don't know, like, easy to follow cave system, it would be so much simpler to navigate things and just find things, but I guess that would just make the game way too easy, huh? Uh, let's see. Should have brought some more stone with, with me for blocking up halls, doorway, always. I tried to bring as little supply as I could because I didn't want to risk wasting too much stuff if I should happen to die. I'm not... Let's see, what do we got? Okay, this area is isolated. Let's just make sure nothing spawns on me. There we go. I'm going to collect this since I'm here. Ooh, Lapis Ore. Which, of course, I will not be getting because I don't have an Iron Pickaxe, but nice to know it's there. Uh, oh, come on. There we go. I guess this wasn't necessary. There we go. Now that it's sealed in the back already, I can reclaim some stone here. Let's see, where was I going? Oh, I, see, I came in. Right, let's do something. Opening up there. Uh, interrupted again. Okay. This is. It's very nerve wracking. Like, I don't like this, it's not a very, metho like, if I was, it'd be different if I went in, like, say, from a surface in a cave, when you start, like, normally you can run around the ground outside, and you'll find openings to caves everywhere, they're just, you know, they're all over the place, and, uh, you know, oh, watch out, god, I'm getting shot, stupid, Skeleton bastard. Ah, okay. And there's openings everywhere, and if you go in one of those caverns, it's it's not really that big a deal because uh, you'll notice there after that arrow block fell down after I uh, <laughs> took a, I uh, dug up the block it was in. Um, an arrow that can fall, like, after you, uh... No, okay, I just went in a circle. Uh, an arrow can fall, like, if you mine a block that's stuck in, and while it's falling, it can still hit you. So, uh, keep that in mind if you're ever, like, digging something that has an arrow stuck in it. Even your own arrows, if you make a bow and arrow and, like, shoot in the air, when it comes back down, it can hurt you. So, watch out. <laughs> uh, nothing. Find some more. It's uh, games like it's times like this in this game that remind me of uh, other survival horror esque type games. Like um, I'm hearing a lot of activity behind the wall here. Nope. Yep. Opening. So um, like I played this game uh a long way. Hey, water. That's interesting. Uh, a little while back or I tried to play this game, called uh, Penumbra. And um, it's made by the same group, I believe, that did um, Amnesia, if you're familiar with that. It's uh, been a fairly large craze lately. Uh, it's this... This game that, um, like, you're on... I think he's drowning. 
Uh, there's a game. It's you know, you're you're just an isolated person in a spooky ass environment, and you don't really know what's going on or what you're doing, but you gotta like solve mysteries and, and interact with the environment and that sort of thing. But it's really creepy to play because like it really sort of the darkness and the ambience of it all really starts to get to your emotions and there's there's a lot of scare factor stuff that goes on and it's it's they're great games in their own right but they're not my kind of game like I tried playing Penumbra and it's it's brilliant I, I played like 15 minutes and, and I actually really really like the game but it was so counterintuitive to my own personality type that I couldn't enjoy it. Like, the character just would, like, freak out in these scenarios and become unable to do stuff when he encountered shit that would be aggressive towards him. And all I could think to myself is, oh my god, you're such a wuss. You know, like, I was in this hallway and an angry dog was, like, around the corner and he was, like, freaking out and having an anxiety attack. And, you know, in real life, I'm this, I'm a big, giant dude. I mean, I'm overweight. I'm six foot eight. I'm massive. You know, two meters tall. So, if I were to encounter an angry dog, I would just kick the fucking shit out of it. You know? It would be just, like, foot in your head. You're a dead dog. So, I just couldn't relate to the fear and paranoia the character was having, and it angered me to such an extent that I was unable to actually play the game, because I just couldn't get into the, uh, the sensation of the feeling of what the character was going through. And so I, that's, I think the major flaw with those styles of game is that you know, it forces an archetype on the on the player that may or may not work with their own personal feelings and, and way they believe. So it's just... It, they're brilliantly designed, well-made environments, very engrossing, but it's not the right kind of sensation. It's like, if I was in... A, a dark cavern like this, I'd be like tossing flares, and I'd want to bring something better than a sword made out of stone and a bunch of cheesy leather armor. But it, it's it's the only option I've got at this point in the game, so that's interesting. So we'll just it's you know I'm worried about the safety of my character, but I also like really detest you know, the limitations of, I guess you just call it like programming design limited, like there's no way to account for individual, an individual's bravery in a scenario when you're supposed to be making like a scare tactic game. So it's like, well, what, what do you do, right? I mean, you can't just like, I don't think going up is going to get me lava, I need to go down. Let's go look somewhere else. Um, it's like, wh where do you go? What do you do? I mean, how do you go from A to B in this, in this scenario? So, like I said, I applaud those kind of games. I love the Resident Evil games, because at least in those games, you get to be the badass. You get to carry the guns. You get to kill the, an the things that are attacking you. And it's, it's not about fear. It's about overcoming that scare factor, and it's like I got some light in the distance over there. Maybe I have some more lava. So, those games were great for me. I really enjoyed the Resident Evil series, and I've played all except the five that came out like last year, because I don't have the next-gen system. Uh, with any luck, I'll get a chance to try it sometime here in the future, but until then, I'll just have to, uh, Stay tuned, as it were. Uh, I'm not gonna play with you. And uh, I'll have to come back to him. I don't know, I was watching a lot of E3 videos lately, and like there's so many really great, amazing looking games. 
and uh, and I, I'd love to play all these, but I, between my crappy PC and not having a next-gen system, I just, I can't even play 90% of the games that are released these days, and it's so demoralizing to be missing out on video games when I was, like, so into them, like, just 10 years ago. And, you know, I was always that dude that had new games. There must have been more lava here at one time for these two, because when a lava flow interacts with a water flow, they create cobblestone. So there must have been more, and it, like, probably ran into it. Now, when, uh, whoa, check out all the mushrooms. When water flows over a lava source block, it'll create obsidian, which is why I'm harvesting lava, to create obsidian. But, uh, it doesn't, when the flows of one meet the flows of the other, it doesn't create obsidian. Or if you let lava run onto water, it won't create obsidian. Well, barring one specific, like, glitchy thing that can happen, uh, anyways, there, I'll have to, like, uh, there's a video, I'll have to look it up and I'll try to include it in the description of a, uh, a way to harvest uh, lava or harvest obsi or create obsidian with only one block of lava, and uh, it's relatively ingenious. I've never seen anything else like it. Um, like I said, it's a glitch. You know, it's some sort of the game's not supposed to work that way, so it might get fixed in the future. I don't know. But uh, if I can find the uh, the link, I'll include the link in the description below. Mm, let's not go this way. So, this has been a, uh, a not super successful run. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm going to take all these mushrooms, and that's awesome. Because uh, I can always use mushrooms. Uh, mushrooms... Uh, once you have uh, brown and red mushrooms, you can make mushroom soup. And uh, I've already got a few back at the house that I picked up randomly that were growing in the trees. But uh, the more I can get, the better. Mushroom soup, uh, when you make it, restores eight of your hearts when you're injured. And it's relatively simple to make, especially now that mushrooms actually spread. So. I'm going to try to uh, get around to making a mushroom farm sometime here in the future. Alrighty. And I got that. Awesome. Yeah, it's, um, unless you're going to be using your lava, try not to keep it in your active inventory. Or the chances are you may uh, burn yourself by accident. Because all you got to do is right click somewhere and then poof, you've got lava everywhere. <laughs> and that's not fun. I think I will make an exodus now because the video has gone on for quite a while anyways. So I'm going to head back out, head home, and uh, I have to come back later I guess to get the rest of the lava. Hopefully I can find a lake sometime or another. So that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed my little run. Uh, it was certainly dangerous and fraught with hills. <laughs> uh, that'll be it for this edition. I will see you next time. So, goodbye. And, goodbye.